So who is this guy? AG, in the 1930s, was managed by Charles Schwab's Swiss father, Eugene Schwab. The Escher Weiss factory in Ravensburg was named a National Socialist Model Company by the ruling Nazi party. During World War II, nearly 3,600 forced labourers worked at the Escher Weiss. Escher Weiss hydroturbine technology employed uranium isotope separation and also uranium enrichment at the Nazi atom bomb project at the Norse heavy water production facility in Norway. Some years later, a similarly ruthless regime was to suppress the rights of its native populations and enforce a system of segregated apartheid for over 30 years in South Africa. The ruling regime, fearing the fall of their segregated empire, and with support from certain nations, embarked upon the covert and illegal development of atomic weapons. Will there ever be one man, one vote in South Africa? No. Isn't that why you are almost certain to be faced with a bloody war? No, but there's, no, there's not one man, one vote anywhere in because Africa. This is Radio Freedom, the voice of the African National Congress, to spearhead the people's struggle for the seizure of power from the oppressor. Upon joining the company in 1967, the young Klaus Schwab transformed the company from its civilian nuclear energy status to involve Sousa Escher Weiss in the global arms nuclear market. Despite UN sanctions and an international arms ban against South Africa's apartheid regime, young Schwab's company would develop vital nuclear processing equipment for the development of South Africa's atomic weapons program. Don't push us too far. Don't push us too far. Where are we from? And we can't be! Who are these guys anyway? Nazis from the moon. <laughs> That's too much. By 1969, the incorporation of Escher Weiss into Sousa was fully completed and they would be rebranded into Sousa AG. So we get that selling illegal nuclear technology earns lots of dosh. Mr. Donald Rumsfeld did the same for Iraq and North Korea. And such public service does not go unnoticed. Klaus was knighted by Queen Elizabeth, Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. Received the Knight Commander's Cross of Germany, 2012. The Grand Cordon of the Rising Sun of Japan, 2013. He is a Knight of the Légion d'Honneur of France, 1997. And of course, the China Reform Friendship Medal, 2018. And last but not least, he personally received the Intriguing Candlelight Award from UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. To feed the world in the next 50 years, we will need to produce as much food as was produced in the last 10,000 years. Food security will only be achieved, however, if regulations on genetically modified foods are adapted to reflect the reality that gene editing offers a precise, efficient and safe method of improving crops. The lines between technologies and beings are becoming blurred and not just by the ability to create lifelike robots or synthetics. Instead it is about the ability of new technologies to literally become part of us. Technologies already influence how we understand ourselves, how we think about each other, and how we determine our realities as the technologies give us deeper access to parts of ourselves. We may begin to integrate digital technologies into our bodies. Crucial moment to rebuild the future, to reset our policies. We also want to work together on building back better. I call it pull back better. And wegen all these Untermenschen. The World Economic Forum makes censorship pledge to tackle harmful content and conduct online, a big tech government coalition to control what people see online. 
It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. Over four centuries ago, the Dutch East India Company was the world's first independent public offering. When adjusted for inflation, its highest market capitalization would be worth over $7 trillion today. That's seven times the size of Apple. The British East India Company was quick to follow. Research by renowned Indian economist Utsar Patnaik, drawing on nearly two centuries of detailed data on tax and trade, concluded that Britain drained a total of nearly $45 trillion from India at today's value. For perspective, $45 trillion is 17 times more than the total annual gross domestic product of the United Kingdom. The East India Company also gained vast fortunes in the opium trade in China and became the largest company on earth in its time. The trade continues, but China is no longer a major customer. The Committee of 300 is a product of the British East India Company's Council of 300. 